Local Network and welcome to our new series where we put you behind the helm of some of the most iconic and cutting edge boats on the water. Today we will be discussing the inspiration behind this new model, its performance, technology, and where you can experience one for yourself. Without further ado, I would like to introduce CEO of Mystic Power Boats, John Cosker. Thank you, Summer. Today's a very special day for us here at Mystic as we expand our growing outboard powered express cruiser line. And I'd like to introduce today our brand new M5200. So John, take us back. In 1996, you founded Mystic Power Boats. Mm -hmm. In 2004, you created your largest build ever, the SL700 that was 70 foot long and capable of speeds up to 80 miles per hour. And fast forward to 2015, Mystic produced the first M4200 center console with a V-Hull and outboard power. And today we are honored to be on board the new M5200. This boat is incredible. John, please tell us the story behind this. This boat we're sitting on here today, it's about a, a culmination of two years worth of work that we did um, from scratch design. Uh, I do all the naval architecture and design work myself here at Mystic. So uh, we started uh, with a clean sheet, um, had basically some layouts and stuff that we wanted to fit into on the boat. And um, we started out overall length about 52 feet, uh, 14 foot beam. We kind of pushed the beam out on the boat wider than some of the other boats on the market. We've got a lot of real estate to work with here. so. We've got a number of different seating arrangements we can do. This is our factory demo boat here. We have basically as much seating as we can fit in the middle there because we, we load this boat up. We do a lot of poker runs with our demo boats and we're using this as our platform to go out and show people how the boat runs, um, you know, both, both out in the ocean here in Daytona Beach or on the intercoast. We'll see what kind of speeds it'll attain. Definitely not lacking on seating here. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we have a number of different arrangements that we can do in this. We're working with different customers. Um, we've got hull number five in the mold actually. Um, even though we're, we're just releasing this boat, we have been, you know, as we've developed this boat, we've also put other boats into production. So we have two boats in rigging right now. We have one assembly getting the hull and deck put together, and then we have the fifth one in the mold. You know, when we kind of made the change in 2015, we went away from our racing heritage that we, that we worked at so hard back then. Um, you know, we went to outboard power mm -hmm. and we started focusing a little bit more on a pleasure boat, a more reproducible boat. Now we're, our goal next year is to build about 30 something boats with the new model coming in. Um, we've got our 38 footer and then we've got our 42. You know, we made the jump all the way up to a 52 with this boat. We may fill the model line somewhere in the middle eventually. So we've had about three people who have 42s. Um, one gentleman's on a second 42 and he's made the leap to go to a 52. Um, we actually have one of our customers who has one of our 50-foot cats who is going into a 52. He's replacing his, his big 58-foot Sea Ray with this boat here for Lake of the Ozarks. It was a lot of work developing this boat, but as we saw today when we went out in the ocean with it, um, you know, I started the company in 1996, but it was down in Melbourne, Florida, and what we found down there was we had no inlet. So we moved in 99, we actually moved the company up here to Port Orange and then eventually out to DeLand. Mm -hmm. um, the big reason for that move was so we can go out in the Atlantic and test our boats in the real world. So, you know, you can see out there today, it was a sporty Atlantic day out there. The inlet was, uh, was a little bit rough. So, you know, I was really pleased with how the boat went through it and everything. Um, you know, we've got very deep gunnels on this boat. We've got a big bow to get through big waves with it. You know, this is a long distance cruiser. It's it's comfortable, it's fast, it's efficient. You know, we have a Sea Keeper 6 on board here, so it's incredibly stable when you're sitting at rest as well as when you're running out in the ocean. This bow area here, we really opened this up quite a bit with the extra beam that's on the um, 52 versus the 42. So we have seating for about 11 people up here. Um, we actually have tables on the floor that will go up and down. They go up to a sun pad height and we can fill this whole front area in, make that into a great big sun pad in the front here, or it can go up to dining height. So you can actually have lunch, dinner, whatever you want out in the front here. Um, I task okay. PPI who does all of our, our seating on the boats um, with creating basically three thrones here in the, in the, <laughs> the front. They're, some of the best seats in the house. They're very, very comfortable. They actually have phone chargers under each armrest. We have um, switching on the side there where you can control your light stereo system right from that switching as well as the front tables. Um, we have our windlass locker up in the front here where um, you can operate the windlass either from the front or from the, the helm itself. And we have a chain lock up there that you have to release before letting the chain down. 
There's an access hatch there that gets you down into the chain locker in there. So if the chain does get spooled up or something like that, we have access into that to be able to, to get, get it undone up in the front there. And then the other two seats in the front here actually flip inside inward too, and there's more storage below those. We also have a locker in the floor here. Um, it's serves two purposes. One is it's access down to our bow thruster, which is down under the, the flooring down in here. And then we have all of our line and fender storage here. So you have one central area for everybody to go on the boat where all the dock lines come from and then they go back to after you left the dock. This new model, the M5200, obviously it's 52 feet long, overall length plus engines on it. Um, the beam is 14 foot, so that gives us a lot of room on board with the boat, both you know on deck as well as in the cabin. Um, this particular boat's powered with quad 600 horsepower Mercury um, V12s. You know, we do have different engine options on the boat. There's a lot of standard equipment on the boat. It's not a long option list on it. It's mainly, you know, which engine package do you want to put on it. We can put five or six of the Mercury Racing 450s on it or the, the quad 600s on this boat. Um, speeds range, you know, anywhere from in the 70s. Uh, we've got a full carbon fiber built boat that's going together in the shop right now that'll have six 450s on it. Um, that boat, we're looking at upwards of maybe 90 miles an hour with that boat. So it's, it's pretty exciting for a big boat like this to run that fast. So uh, we've got about a three foot draft. Um, we kind of keep our whole model line. So roughly a three, three foot draft, this one's 38 inches on this. Um, so it's great Bahamas boat, shallow water boat, you know, to get into all the areas you want to explore with it. In this boat, we wanted something that was a little bit bigger so that we could maybe go down the island chain and maybe spend two or three nights on the boat where, you know, the cabin in the 42 is a little bit smaller. It doesn't have its own enclosed head, so it's not as private. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this has a much larger cabin. It actually has an aft cabin in it. So if a family wanted to go down, the front berth converts into a nice bed in the front there. And then you have an aft berth in there for the kids also. So wow. you both have your privacy, has its own separate shower away from the head on the boat. So there's a partition wall in there. So it's not a wet head. So, you know, you can go in there, take a shower and not have the mirror all wet and everything on it. It's a very comfortable area below, obviously air conditioned down there. Um, we have an option for um, cockpit air conditioning on the boat too, to make it that much more comfortable. It's a boat that you could stay on a little bit more or you can travel with it. Um, you know, obviously we've come from the poker run market too. You can take this boat on a poker run. When we had the boat up at Lake of the Ozarks um, not that long ago, we actually went out with 18 people on board this boat. And I was really pleased with it because everybody wasn't stumbling all over each other. You know, we've gone out with a number of people on my 42s. Um, it gets a little crowded after a while when you get too many people on it. It was perfectly comfortable being out with that many people on the boat for the day. You mentioned poker runs, and I know those are very performance oriented. How do you keep up with the other boats? <laughs> well, why don't we go back and I'll show you the power on this boat. You know, Summer, we've enjoyed a really long and, and really great relationship with Mercury and Mercury Racing. Um, all of our all of our boats are powered with, with mercury you know obviously these 600s are just incredible engines they put together um, they, they pack so much technology into these you know whether it's just the the easy access to get in and, and service the whole top of your engine um, to the two-speed transmission that's in it that makes it get on plane so quickly dual prop power so you've got so much thrust for maneuverability and things like that right into the joystick you know i'm not a huge joystick fan we've built some joystick boats but not a ton of them the joystick on this because you've got so much thrust in the back of the boat and this joystick also interfaces with the bow thruster which we've never had that luxury before so you can pull this boat straight off a dock sideways so i can put anybody at the helm of this and they can maneuver it easily which people transitioning from a smaller boat to a bigger one like this it's that's kind of the first thing they ask about, you know, can they um, handle it themselves and things like that. And honestly, graduating up to this bigger boat, I never thought I'd take this out by myself. With the features that are on this boat, I would have no problem doing that at all. Maneuverability at the dock is important, but the one thing I've, I've kind of coined the phrase about this boat is it looks like a yacht, but it drives like a sports car. <laughs> you know, with our background in race boat technology and things like that, you know, we're a relatively light boat for its size. We weigh about 26,000 pounds. You know, that translates into some really good efficient cruising speeds. You know, I found in running this boat a little bit I have so far, anywhere from 45 to 65 miles an hour, our fuel mileage is within about a tenth of a mile per gallon. So it's really efficient. Throughout our model range, we try to have about a 300 mile range um, with, a, with a full tank of fuel. Sure. So this boat holds 650 gallons of fuel. That'll get us easily a uh, 300 mile range with some reserve on it. Well, I would love to check it out. Can we walk to the helm and show me how it works? Absolutely, let's take a look at it. Let's go. So we're here at the helm of the boat. Now we mentioned the joystick. Um, we have really good easy access to the joystick um, piloting system right here. Um, this boat 
in particular has 24 inch screens on it. Standard is 22, you can upgrade to the 24s. We have dash AC on this boat, so you can stay cool because you're pretty well protected in here. We have Love a big that. windshield on it, so <laughs> there's virtually no wind in this area here. It keeps you nice and dry, not wind blown, very comfortable in this area here. Um, the layout is similar to what we have with our 42 and our 38 helms. We kind of let off that. We've got the brand new Mercury uh, controls here with the next generation, your Sea Keeper controls, your stereo controls. Um, we have a charger in the center here for your phone, so it not only holds your phone in place, so you can see it right in front of you there to use it, but it also charges it while it's in place there too. Love that, gotta keep it charged. Absolutely. I so. know you take a lot of selfies, right? <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> I would in this boat. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a variable speed bow thruster system on this. It's a side power bow thruster system that actually interfaces with the joystick system. So when you push the, the joystick sideways on this, it's running both the bow thruster as well as the engines. The strange thing with it when it's maneuvering is you don't see the tops of these engines turn, it's just the bottom lowers that turn on it. Wow. So, um, like, as I said before, very maneuverable with the joystick and everything on it. You've got great visibility out of here. It's a full glass windshield wrap around. You've got another GPS up at the top here. So we've got a 12 inch screen up there. It's a full function GPS. What I've got it set up for right now is actually a rear view camera, which we use a lot in the poker runs and everything. So you can see what's behind you, what's right. coming up on you when you slow down. Um, the boat shows everybody thinks it's a docking camera. We never use it for that. But, <laughs> um, one thing we've done with these boats now is for everybody involved in it is we can take so many people out on the boat. We actually have speed up here so people can see how fast they're going. Um, we have another big screen up in the front so everybody in the front of the boat can see that also and see you know what the speed is. Um, if we have a say a navigational course up there or something like that they can actually see sure. how long it's going to be before we get to our destination and things like that. So we've wow. tried to draw the people into the boat that much more so they've got as much information as the captain does at this point on these boats. So one thing we haven't really talked about that much is this great big hardtop that's on this boat. Um, you know, it kind of tortured me throughout the design, like how much we needed to cover and then keep a hardtop on the boat that just doesn't look like a big plank thrown up there. So I'm really happy with the styling on it. And then with the boat, how much coverage it really gives you for a full day out on the boat. You know, we're in the shade here. All three rows of seats here can easily see out of the boat. It doesn't block your visibility at all. Um, you know, we have all of our stereo equipment up in the roof here. The whole hardtop is basically, it's carbon fiber from the gunnels up. So it makes it really lightweight, very stiff structure up there. Um, we also have the shade systems on the front and back of this boat with the poles on it. So you can spend a full day out on this boat and really not be out in the direct sunlight on it. So you can be in here in full coverage here under the hardtop, or you can be out on one of the other decks where you might get a little bit of sunlight, but you're not getting the direct floor to sun like we have out here today. Yeah. The stereo system in the boat, we have, uh, it's over 24 speakers in this boat. It's the biggest system that we put in them. Um, you see the speakers throughout the top, they're throughout the gunnels. Um, we have four 12 inch subwoofers in here, two tens up in the front. They're everywhere. Um, it's a great sound system and it's actually <laughs> the same system. It's the highest end system that we put in our 42. But I found with this boat, it's spread out so much more because we have so much more real estate to work with it. It even sounds better than it does in the 42. You might have noticed when we left the dock this morning, it was a little bit darker and much earlier today. So you can see that all the speakers on the boat actually light up. We have a LumaShore lighting system on this boat. So you can touch one button on the dash on this and turn every light on the boat blue or every light on the boat red. You, we can create themes um, with the lighting system on the boat to tie into interior colors, the overall paint job on the boat or something like that. Very um, cool. You know, we have 12 underwater lights on this boat. Um, our lighting package comes standard with the 52 and then you can add underwater lights to that. So you get a standard four transom lights on it. We added an additional four transom lights and then we have underwater light in every one of the steps on this boat too. So, you know, this is a boat that you can not only can be very comfortable in it during the day, but you can look great at night with it too. The nice thing with Mystic is everything on the boat is custom pretty much. Um, we start with the hull and deck. We work with the customers on paint, patterns, flooring. So what we'll do is our, our painter, Doug Harrell, um, DHD Designs, he'll start with the customer and pick out like a color palette on it. Okay. So say, you know, is it blue? Is it red? Do you want racy striping? Do you want something a little more sedate on it? He works with them and he gets a lot of preliminary designs and things like that done. And then what we do is we have the owner come into our design studio for usually a full day, if not two, to plan out everything else in the boat. Um, every texture, every color, the stitch patterns, what color the stitching is, your flooring, what's the pattern in the floor. Um, we, we work with Gator Step because they're a very custom company like ourselves, so they'll do renditions for us to show the customer exactly what their flooring is gonna look like in color 
um, as well as what the pattern is going to look like on the flooring. So we try to make the process as fun and easy as possible. It can be overwhelming for some people. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, the boat is a boat. Um, you know, we have a lot of competitors build boats like this. It's all about the customer experience with Mystic. You know, it's, it's how we treat them throughout the whole build process because they are very involved in the boat and everything. And then, you know, how we treat them after the build and, and through their ownership experience. Um, you know, it's rewarding for us that about 40% of our sales are actually return customers, whether they're moving up in size from a 38 to a 42 and now from a 42 to a 52, or whether they're just building a new boat with new power on it or something like that. We sell everything factory direct, so we have a very close relationship through the build and then throughout their ownership um, experience with the boat, we keep very close tabs on them. We've built over 100, I think it's 120 outboard boats at this point, and I think there's only two or three boats out of all of those that we actually don't know where they are or who the customer is. So we keep track of the boats after the sales and try to support our customers. Thank you so much for having us here today. This has been an amazing experience. Thank you for the walkthrough on the new M5200. What do you say we take one last cruise and head back to the dock? That sounds great, let's fire it up. It's been an amazing experience here on the all new M5200 with CEO John Kosker. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and comment below on what boat you want to see next. Bye guys!